Hello and welcome to Just One More Watch. If this is your first time here, a special hello just for you. My name is Jody and I love watches. If you also love watches, perhaps you'd like to subscribe to the channel by hitting the big button with the word subscribe on it. Today, you and I are going on a round the world tour, a global adventure taking in some of the world's very best micro brand watch companies. From New Zealand to Japan, across Asia to Europe and North America, I've gathered 25 of what I think are the world's best small watch companies. If you're just getting into the wonderful world of micro brand watches, or you're looking for your next one to add to your collection, this video should give you plenty of food for thought. But one brand that will not be featuring on today's list is my own brand, Erebus Watches, because it would be completely unethical of me to let you know that all eight colors of origin are back in stock and ready for immediate shipment. It would be unprincipled of me to tell you that you can still pick up one of the fantastic Erebus Ascent range at a discounted pre-order rate with delivery in September, and it would be simply deplorable of me to let you know that we are dropping, not pre-ordering, but dropping a small form factor diver late next month. And I definitely won't be leaving a link to erebuswatches.com in the description of the video. Instead, I'll be talking about 25 of my favorite micro brands that aren't owned by me. But what exactly is a micro brand and what are the pros and the cons of buying from one? Well, there are various definitions of what constitutes a micro, but for me, it's a small independently owned brand that still operates primarily on a direct to consumer sales model. You won't find any of these brands in your local shopping mall jewelry store, for example, and if you find them in a store at all, it will generally be a store selling only micro brands. One of the main attractants of the whole micro brand scene is choice. Uh, this video started as a top 10, then quickly became a top 15, ended up as a top 25 with a silent 26, and could easily have gone on to become a top 50. And if you can think it, chances are somebody has already made it. There are some amazing designs full of color, full of creativity, and full of innovation. Plus you get a boutique product for the same price as a mainstream product. These are all small batch watches with limited production numbers, and you often, but not always, get a direct connection with the brand owner. In the world of faceless Japanese mega corporations run for shareholders, and tax-dodging Swiss conglomerates run by lizard men and Nepo babies, there's a lot to be said for buying from a small company. It's not all roses though. Negatives include a possible lack of support and spare parts should the brand cease to exist in the years to come, and often a lack of availability due to the small scale nature of many brands' production schedules. My only rules today is that they have to be a fairly well-established micro, and I have to have reviewed at least one of their models on the channel in the past so that I'm not recommending anything without having tried it first. I'll tell you in 60 seconds or less what I like about the brand, and then go on to recommend one particular model from their ranges. They're not in any order, by the way, Let's get on with it. But let's start at number one with one of my favorites, a brand that in some ways encapsulates the very best of what it is to be micro. It's Dorenzo, and appropriately enough, they are based in Switzerland, the home of watchmaking. Dorenzo is still very much a one-man show, owned and operated by Sergio Dorenzo. He does everything himself, including designing the watches, and my goodness, would you have a look at his designs. There is now a real continuity of design language across his ever-expanding range, as well as some beautiful color schemes. All the ranges are Swiss made, and the quality matches those designs, but the prices don't. Everything here, everything you've seen, is still well under 1,000 US dollars. My pick of the bunch is the DRZ-02R, the watch on my wrist today. I think this one is a future classic. Problem is, if you want one today, you can't buy one today because they're made in small numbers. However, I know Sergio is doing a second batch of these. He's starting pre-orders again later this week. Don't worry, we will be back in Switzerland again soon, but for now, we're heading to New York City, specifically to Long Island. And at number two, it's a very different proposition to Dorenzo, but one that I think is equally worthy of a place on this list. It's Islander watches. 
Islander Watches is the brainchild of Mark Frankel, the owner of Long Island Watches, who also happens to be one of the nicest men in the entire watch community. He started the brand six years ago after Seiko discontinued the SKX, he decided to create his own version of that classic Japanese watch. Now, a lot of early Islanders did have a rather familiar Seiko-esque look to them, but over the last 18 months, the brand has really started to push their own boundaries in terms of design with some fantastic use of color and texture. But the one thing all Islanders have in common is outstanding value for money. You can pick up an Islander from as little as 200 US dollars and the range tops out at just over 550 for the new Miota powered GMT skin diver. I think that Port Jefferson GMT, despite the price, is the pick of the current range. I look forward to seeing how Mark develops the brand in the future. All right, coming back down in size for number three, it is one of the newest and smallest brands on the list. Out of Japan, it's Namika Watches. Namika are owned by an American expat, Charlie, and his Japanese wife, and they're just about to deliver their second watch, the Okami. I think there's a real Blade Runner slash cyberpunk look to some of Namika's designs, particularly in their use of color and kanji script. Now, kanji must look very ordinary if you're Japanese, but it's like catnip if you have a bad case of Japanophilia. Case in point though about small brands taking design risks that big brands no longer take. Really, it's Seiko, Orient, and Citizen that should be making watches like this, but they don't. So it's over to micros like Namika to take up the slack. Have a look at their new Akami with the purple kanji dial. That's my pick. They're still taking orders for this one and aiming to deliver in October. Next, it's a brand that is local to me. Well, they're a thousand kilometers away, which is local for Australia. It's Melbourne's second hour watches. They are celebrating their fifth year in business this year. They have a range of divers and dress watches, all centered around brand owner Peter's obsession with sacred geometry. This is evidenced no more than in their Mandala model, which I think is the pick of the range. It looks like nothing else on the market, and that is quite an achievement for what is still a relatively young brand. Let's continue our global journey cross the ditch to New Zealand to feature Draken watches. Although in fairness, Draken are owned by South African expat Michael Blythe. He still uses the country of his birth as inspiration for many of his model ranges, but has now blended in some design cues from his country of residence, the land of the long white cloud. Again, Draken have been around for five years or so now and are beginning to update their original model series using all the know-how they've gained over the last half decade. If you want a chunky, unique looking dive watch that ticks a lot of boxes for not a lot of money, have a look at their Tugela range, the indices inspired by the shapes of South African indigenous tribal art. But if we are talking about chunky dive watches, we have to talk about Helm. Helm in some ways represents the best and the worst of microband watches. The watches themselves are awesome, beyond awesome. They're big, they're bold, they're heavy, they're overbuilt and over-engineered. They're full of loom and they have a real in-your-face swagger about them. And they're fantastically well-priced. You're looking at no more than a little bit over $400 delivered for any of the watches in their range. But you're gonna have to be patient. There's still a one-man operation, I believe, and that one man has a limited output each month. They operate a waiting list system, and there are literally thousands of people on the waiting list for each of their models, leading to wait times of several years. I'm not even kidding. They're definitely worth the wait though, or you can just find one lightly used instead. The Vanuatu is my pick. Super clean, classic, legible, chunky tool diver. I've got one myself. Now, Helm are not the only brand to operate on a scarcity model running either a wait list or doing limited drops on each of their new watches. One other is Canadian brand Halios. They have even been referred to as the Rolex of micro brands due to the difficulty in acquiring one in the first place and the fact that a used Halios often sells for more than the price of a new Halios. But you know, it's not just cynical marketing. Running this type of business model helps keep small brands lean and efficient and helps reduce the risk of collapsing under the weight of their own stock levels. The Seaforth is the one I would recommend here. I think there's a pre-order on for these at the moment if you're keen. Perhaps you don't get a lot of bells and whistles for your money, but you get a really clean design and a watch that will hold its value better than most things. Whisper it quietly, 
if you're a bit of a flipper. All right, let's continue our round the world adventure by highlighting a couple of brands from the micro brand hotbed that is Singapore. I'm not sure whether it's favorable tax rates or the proximity of Singapore to the manufacturing hub of China, but there are loads of micros based out of Singapore. Three of my favorites are Vario, RZE, and of course, Zelos. Vario is arguably the most interesting of these though, and probably the smallest of the three if you're looking for your next micro to be even more exclusive. Ivan, the brand owner, does his own thing, and his thing seems to be Art Deco inspired dress watches and mid-century military pieces. You will not find a dive watch in Vario's range. I think one of only four brands on today's list that don't want to sell you a diver. Leave me a comment, by the way, if you think you can identify the other three. They do want to sell you First World War or inspired trench and medic watches, second world war inspired dirty dozen style field watches, and as far as I know, they're the only micro brand that offers a reversible watch, oddly enough, called the Verso. My pick though is the Empire GMT, a lovely little Art Deco inspired watch in a range of attractive seasonal colors that comes on your choice of excellent leather strap. Vario also sells straps, so there's no surprise that the ones supplied on their own watches are great. Next up is RZE watches owned by Travis Tan, who used to be one of the owners at Boulder, another Singaporean micro. RZE has very much a rugged outdoorsy focus. They've also dabbled in EDC, selling knives and backpacks, etc., as well as selling predominantly coated titanium watches. The range is therefore skewed to divers and particularly field watches, but Travis is a commercial pilot, so you will also find a couple of pilot's watches in there as well. Well, my pick is the Resolute Field Watch. It's a simple, clean design, but you can get it in a couple of more daring colors, including a vibrant yellow if you want to. Talking of vibrant colors, no list of micro brands would be complete without acknowledging arguably the biggest and most successful of them all. Zelos. Zelos is the brainchild of El Shantang, who despite a decade of astounding success, is still very much involved in the day-to-day -day operations of the company. As the brand has grown in popularity, Zelos has chosen to employ a drop-based scarcity model, limited number of watches, bunch of different colors, get them before they're gone, and they usually do go very, very quickly, leading to certain desirable colors being flipped for profit on the used market. The problem with this is most of the good stuff is only available on the used market. So if you want a Z-Loss, sign up for their newsletter, pick the one you want, set an alarm for the drop, and have your credit card handy. My pick of the bunch here is the Swordfish Titanium. I thought that was a great watch. It made my top five watches of the year list a couple of years ago. They were under $450 and just so full of originality and vibrancy in terms of the design and the colors that the watch was available in. But like I said, you can't actually buy a new one today. All right, that's quite enough of Singapore for the moment. Let's head west to the UK for number 11. It's Fairer. Now, I've only actually reviewed one Fairer on the channel, but I am a big fan of their designs, particularly their use of color. They seem to have this knack of putting multiple, apparently disparate colors onto the same dial of the same watch, but making it work. I mean, Look at some of these watches. If I described them to you without showing them to you, you would think they were gonna be awful. In fact, you might still think they're awful, but I don't. I think they're great. I honestly don't think they make a bad watch, but the Aquamatic Dive Watch range is probably my pick because it happens to be one of the more economically viable ways to get a fairer on your wrist, coming in at just under 1,000 US dollars per watch. Sticking with the UK and sticking with some really interesting designs, it's the Marlow Watch Company with Scottish origins, but now based just outside of London. I'll forgive them for that. Marlow have a bit of a cult following, their own super fans who just love what they do, and what they do is really rather varied. There are certain design cues, like the hands that seem to carry from one model to the next, but they're prepared to have a go at most things, whether that's compressor style dive watches, GMTs, or square watches, and it's the square I'd recommend you have a look at. They're Astro model. This style of watch is not something you'll see often from the big brands, Bell and Ross's side of course, but wears surprisingly well because of a short lug to lug. Pick a colorful dial, pick a colorful strap, and sit back and enjoy people asking, 
What the hell is that on your wrist? All right, heading transatlantic again for number 13. It's a small New York micro that has been getting some recent interest from some big names. It's Brew. When Idris Elba is spotted wearing one of your watches, you know you've made it into the big time. He must enjoy a coffee himself because there's a coffee theme running through all of Brew's offerings. Oddly enough, their logo is even a coffee bean. The one brew that I have reviewed took all of that caffeinated cool and then added another layer of retro with an 8-bit theme on top of that. And you know what? They're not expensive. You're looking at between four and 500 US dollars for one of these. Take your pick. I've always fancied the metric with the retro dial, just like Idris's. Again, a bunch of interesting colors you'd think wouldn't work when combined, but they do work, especially with that very cool 1970s silhouette. Changing coasts, another brand it would be remiss of me not to mention on a list like this is Nodus. Brand owners Wes and Cullen have been bringing a little bit of Cali cool to the scene since 2017, as well as bringing their own innovations to the sector in the form of the Nodex clasp system, which they are happy to license to third parties. I looked at one of their Avalons years and years ago, but I prefer, and would therefore recommend to you, have a look at some of their Sector series instead. A range of simple, attractive three and four hand automatics, yours for around 450 US dollars for a three hander, and a little bit more than that for a GMT. Forming the year after notice in 2018, it's Trasca. A small American brand with a small range of watches, all of which display a really clean look. I had a look at a few of their early models in the early days of my channel, but they have since then launched a couple of new pieces, including the Venturer GMT and the Seafarer Compressor Diver. Traskas are definitely not as in your face as some of the other brands on today's list. They're more like low key daily wear pieces, Personally, I think the Ventura GMT is probably the most resolved of the designs with the best proportions. It does also happen to be the most expensive though at 720 US dollars, but that's still not a huge amount of money when you compare it to the entry level Swiss stuff that I think frankly, it compares rather favorably to. All right, before we head back to Europe, I wanna highlight a brand that I reference frequently on the channel as coming straight into the scene at a relatively premium price point for a micro anyway. That brand is of course Monta. They now have a range of only five models, but a number of different color versions of course within each of those ranges. Prices start from two and a half thousand US dollars and go up to just under 4,000 US dollars. USA based but Swiss made, they really are taking on some of the big Swiss brands like Longines, Oris, and frankly even Tudor with some of those prices. Whether or not they have the cachet to tempt you and your money away from those big Swiss hitters is another question, but it is great to see a micro punching in that upper weight division nonetheless. I've always fancied the Atlas GMT myself, beautiful dimensions and a great looking watch. All right, let's head back to Europe for number 17 and start with an Italian brand whose designs I just love. It's Unimatic. Stark, minimalist, brutalist, and very, very sexy as a consequence. Unimatic strips all unnecessary frivolity from their designs, leaving only the bare time-telling essentials. Sometimes they don't even leave those. I'm not sure you could time a dive with some of these dive bezels, for example, but people aren't buying these to time dives. They're buying them because they are seriously cool. Having said that, you're kind of either all in for Unimatic or not because they do all rather look similar and you don't get a lot of bells and whistles for your cash. I don't even think they offer a bracelet option with any of their watches, for example. In terms of which model I'd recommend, well, just take your pick. Like I said, they are all quite similar. Personally, I've always liked the U3 Classic Dive Chrono. I think that one looks fantastic and dive chronos themselves are a bit of a rarity, which only adds to the appeal. If, however, you prefer your watches offering more is more rather than less is less, have a look at Stratton. The Swiss-based brand's owner, Kyle Schutt, is another thoroughly nice gentleman. He's a fan of the 1970s, he's a fan of motorsport, he's a fan of 1970s motorsport, and this is reflected by his range of watches. There are a lot of driving chronographs rather than 
diving chronographs in the Stratton range. And 70s colours like purple, orange, brown and yellow dominate, as do 70s case shapes such as my pick of the bunch, the TV Case Special. I've actually got some of these new colour versions in the queue for review at the moment, stay tuned for that. You're up for about a grand for a Valjoux powered automatic, or about half of that for a Seiko powered Mecha Quartz. So you get that same retro look, but at two very different price points depending on your budget. Sticking with Switzerland, one brand that has to be on the list today is Formex. They have gone from nowhere to prominence over the last five years by releasing a range of innovative daily and dive watches with a number of patented features like ratcheting clasps and suspended cases. Their reef diver is better made and better spec than the big brand competition, but I personally really enjoy their Essence Legera 3 Hander, a suspended carbon fiber case, titanium movement holder, ratcheting rubber strap. It's a watch you put on your wrist and forget it's even there, even if you're unlikely to forget the price tag at around three and a half grand. But even then, it's still a damn sight cheaper than a similarly spent carbon fiber tag heuer, for example. All right, the one and only Swedish brand on the list today is Mayen, which is Dutch for moon. Don't ask. Mayen make a range of smaller than average dive watches, chronographs, and dress watches with a strong retro vibe and they offer fantastic value for money, quite often being amongst the cheapest watches that I've ever seen to feature the movements in the back of them. Plus they now seem to be branching out into these arty collabs that are everywhere at the moment and gaining a bit of traction that way, so good for them. Have a look at the Hudson Diver, now I think in its fourth different iteration, it's available in a bunch of different colors and still won't cost you more than 650 US dollars. All right, a couple of bigger French brands next, the first of which is Yema. I've looked at a few Yemas over the years and by and large enjoyed them immensely. They're what you would call, rather unflatteringly, a zombie brand, with the brand name having been brought back from the dead a few years ago and given a new lease of life with new owners, but with the extensive back catalogue of designs from the old brand from which to plunder. They even have an LED watch in the range, which is not something any of the other brands on today's list can boast. But my personal pick is the Navy Graph Diver. I believe also unique in today's company, you can get it in a simple three hand, no date quartz movement with a Marine National tie-in, all for under $500. The bracelets on these are fantastic and it's got one of the best divers extension I've seen on any affordable watch as well. Next up, it's another French brand who have just got steadily bigger and bigger and bigger over the last five years, it's Baltic. Baltic have a very specific retro look. Indeed, I have said in the past that buying a Baltic is the closest thing you can get to buying a vintage watch without actually buying a vintage watch. So rather than taking a risk on a watch with a 50, 60, 70, or even 80 year old movement, you can buy something that looks vintage, but is brand new, will keep good time, and be backed by a two year warranty. And they've been really successful with their MR, HMS, and Bicompacts ranges. I think their growth is best exemplified by the fact that they now have showrooms, physical showrooms, in New York, Paris, and London. Perhaps if I'm making this video in a few years time, they will be just too big to be considered a micro, but until then, I think they qualify. In fact, I think they more than qualify. In terms of my personal preference, I really enjoyed their recently launched Hermetique model, a very neat and tidy explorer style daily wear watch with a range of colors that won't break the bank. These ones floating around the 500 US dollar mark. On to our last Swiss brand today, it's Oleg and Vachs. Now they're another zombie brand like Yema brought back from the dead a couple of years ago with a thick back catalog of gorgeous skin diver designs such as the P101 that it was my pleasure to review. That one has been discontinued but you can get a similar look from the C1000, the OW350 or the P104. Now we've definitely moved up a price bracket again 
All of these watches are in the 1500 to 3000 US dollar range. So you're gonna have to convince yourself of the brand's heritage before you make a purchase. But I promise you, you won't have to convince yourself of the brand's quality. They are really, really nicely done. The bracelets, for example, all being hand finished in Switzerland, which is not something that too many of the big Swiss brands will be able to say with their hand on their heart. The P104, by the way, is my pick of the bunch. But where, I hear you ask, are the Germans? Well, there is one small German brand squeezing onto the list today in the penultimate slot. That brand is Dekla. Dekla are a much newer German brand than Laco or Stoa, for example, but they make fantastic fliegers and other pilot's watches to a very, very high standard. Everything is made in-house. Cases, dials, hands, the lot, and all watches are assembled to order. Now that means there's a bit of a wait, but they're worth the wait. And because they're made to order, the customization possibilities with a Dekla are almost endless. For each of their models, you can pick various dials, hands, logo, no logo, movement choices, crystal choices, and so on. Talk about exclusivity, it's almost like you're getting a one of a kind piece. And the prices on these hover around the 1,000 US dollar mark. Not the cheapest on today's list, but definitely not the most expensive either, considering the level of customization that is available. I'm personally very happy with my custom Turbulence Pilot's watch that I got from them a few years ago. The quality is fantastic. Last, but by no means least, if you have had a look at all 25 of the watch brands discussed to this point, and you haven't liked anything you've seen, perhaps it's time you checked out Zerich. Zerich watches are bonkers. There's just no other way to describe them, although perhaps I could have said crazy, mad, nuts, insane, wild, or outrageous. You get the idea, I'm sure. They take the traditional three-handed watchmaking rule book and throw it out the window, with models like the Triptych, the Vendetta, the Halograph, the Soloscope, and many, many more. They even make a watch called the Inverter, oddly enough, where the movement is at the top rather than at the bottom. Their whole point is that you don't have to spend 20 grand on an mb &F to get something that is mad. You could spend five, six hundred dollars on a Zenic and achieve pretty much the same thing. Do you know what though? I can't actually recommend any of these to you. You're gonna have to find the one that suits your own particular brand of crazy. So there you have it. If not quite my longest ever video, then certainly my longest video for a long while. But I hope everybody watching discovered at least one brand that they hadn't heard of before, or perhaps had heard of before, but hadn't properly considered before. There are some amazing, small independent watch brands out there. If your favorite micro didn't make the list today, then be sure to leave me a comment and let me know what it is. Like I said, this could easily have been a top 50 rather than a top 25. And it's great to see so many different countries being represented all across Europe, continental USA, Canada, even down here in the Antipodes, an ever-increasing number of brands bringing a local flavor to the micro scene. Long live micro brand watches. My goodness, you've made it to the end. You deserve a cup of tea and a lie down. Frankly, so do I. Why not check out one of these videos before you go though on the brand that I couldn't possibly have put on the list today, but did manage to squeeze into the video regardless. Thanks for watching. I'll see you all again soon.